In New Mexico, we often talk about economic development. We all know the need we have to create more jobs and opportunities for individuals and families to thrive in our communities. But where do we start? One local organization believes that economic development could start with children in our schools who are still learning to read and write. Our producer, Sarah Gustava, sat down recently with the head of Prosperity Works to talk about the Prosperity Kids program. Ona Porter, CEO and president of Prosperity Works, nice to see you today. Thank you for having me. You've been working on the issue of, of poverty and of financial security in New Mexico for a long time. We know New Mexico is a poor state. Lots of people are working on this issue in many different ways. Why does your program believe that savings accounts for children are an effective way to start addressing poverty? Well, you know, there is this uh, fabulous guy whose name is Dr. Willie Elliott. He's at the University of Kansas, and he really is kind of the guru on the relationship between assets and education. And Willie has found in his research that children who have a savings account in their own name, that's important, and there's discussion in the home about some or all of that being for post-secondary education, that those children are four times more likely to go to post-secondary education and three and a half times more likely to complete. Now, the very interesting thing to me about this research, the children he, he studied had $500 or less in an account. So we're not paying for college, clearly. But what we're doing is setting intention. What we're doing is increasing engagement of school, uh, in school of both parents and children. And we don't have to wait for many years to see the outcomes of this. Uh, by third grade, kids who have those savings accounts have better reading scores and also have better math scores. Now, and what does it look like when you're working with these kids? Are you meeting <clears throat> with them one-on-one -on -one in groups? What are you doing? So the pilot project that we're conducting right now is actually for 500 children between uh, birth and 11 years old. They're all in families where the parents have completed 10 weeks of child development and community leadership training in a program called Abriendo Puertas. And that's provided by our partner, Partnership for Community Action. They also get financial capability training. So these pa parents have already made a huge commitment to themselves and to the future of their children. So we are opening accounts for these children with $100, our money, and we're matching up to $200 a year for 10 years. So grandma gives you five bucks, you put it in the bank and it's 10, right? All the children get piggy banks and they're all putting money in there and then taking it to Rio Grande Credit Union, which is our partner in this. Now the other thing that we've done though is that we have opened um, emergency savings accounts for any of the parents who want one. The importance of this is manyfold. First of all, most of these parents have never been banked. If you are unbanked, everything costs more. Brookings says that if you are unbanked and you're trying to cash a payroll check or a benefits check, it costs on average about $30. $30 is a huge amount of money in a low-income family, right? So that buys a lot of Pampers, a lot of gas, a lot of something for sure. So um, we uh, opening these accounts for parents has become a really important thing also. So not only are they banked, we open those with a small amount of money, but we are putting incentive deposits into those accounts for five years up to $100 a year. Now, why is saving so important? Because I think a lot of folks who've grown up in like a solidly middle class family might say, well, just save what you can. It's so simple. Just save what you can. Yeah. Well, we need to look around America and see that, you know, uh, before two th uh, 2008, we actually had a minus savings uh, rate in America. It's gone up a little bit, but not significantly. It's really our goal to have these accounts for every kid in New Mexico and to have those either at birth or, or as they enroll in kindergarten. And why is, the, well, why is the parents having money saved as well, part of, an important part of financial stability for the whole family? Well, there are a number of things about that. So in addition to being an emergency savings account where people can go when there is that emergency, it also takes the burden off of the potential stress that there is in families when there is an emergency. I know my child has money in an account. I can't access that even though I've put some of my money in there, right? And we have this notion in America which is really difficult to assimilate for most of us. All of us should have six months of cash on hand in case we have some life event that sets us off the current path we're on. 
I don't know a single person who has that, right? And when you say that to a low-income family, what they do is freeze in place, right? They can't do that. They can't even think about doing such a thing. But what we've learned is even small amounts of money really stabilize low-income families. And if they have access to that emergency savings account, they're much less likely also to go into uh, a predatory lender, a storefront lender, and really get into a debt trap from which they can never escape. So, but the saving, the habit of saving is thinking about the future, right? And so it's been very interesting. We just got our first uh, feedback from our research project on the child savings accounts. We had a team from the University of Kansas here and they were doing interviews with kids and families. And it's fascinating to see what the children were saying and also what the parents were saying. They talked about safety. They talked about future. They talked about college. All of the things that Willie has found, these par parents and kids were saying. So we're really excited about putting kids on a trajectory towards college that will not um, you know, pay for college entirely, but we expect our children to graduate with five to $7,000, right? So, and college debt in America is now larger than credit card debt. And, uh, you know, if in fact we believe that education is going to set us free, we can't put children in debt for a lifetime by going to college. And there are many, many people now who are looking at, is this the right trade-off? Should I be working or should I be going to school? Because it's going to, you know, I'm going to come out of this and I'm going to get a job that may make more than I made before. They will. But if it takes me 15 or 20 years to pay off college debt, what are all the sacrifices I'm making because of that debt? And what we've learned about that is that um, people with college debt are not buying cars, are not buying homes, are not forming families because this debt is hanging over their head. And so, in fact, it's been demonstrated that they really are a drag on our economy, even though they've completed some level of post-secondary education. You mentioned the researchers coming in from Kansas. Right. How do you use research and data to inform your work and maybe refine your program as you're moving forward? Well, I appreciate that question. We always are looking at a continuous improvement. And we have, um, our researchers are actually coming in again in October. And one of the things that they're going to be doing is actually interviewing uh, the people who really were creators and also modifiers of this program. So there are three women, actually, two women who are parents who've gone through the Abriendo Puertas training and, um, and have emerged as community leaders, and also one of our staff uh, members who have worked together to work with the families to have them enrolled in their uh, and opening their savings accounts. And they have challenged us around many different things. So one of those things is, will I lose my benefits if my child has some money in the bank? Very important question. Um, other questions are, may I save in my own name in the emergency savings account, or does it have to be a dual account with the child's parent? And one of the things that we know that is happening is that women are really doing what they've always done. This isn't a cookie jar, it's an emergency savings account. They want it there for their families to be secure if there is an emergency. The other thing we know about the children's account, they're now being called gateway accounts. And what that means is kids who had accounts as children are much more likely to be vested in um, any kind of retirement uh, programs, uh, any kind of um, other assets like homes uh, as adults and younger. So they learn to save when they're very young and that pattern continues. The connection between saving and future orientation, deferring immediate gratification is enormous. And if you can learn that as a young child, then through all of your life, you're going to be thinking about making decisions based on my future. And so they might not be monetary decisions, they might be other kinds of decisions. Do I take this path or do I take that path? So for instance, many young people have an opportunity to go into a position that doesn't pay a lot of money, but offers a lot of opportunity for the future. And when they have had a habit of saving, they're much more likely to do that and therefore increase their opportunities for the future rather than grab the carrot that's there available today. 
You mentioned wanting to have this program for every young person in New Mexico. How long is it going to take for us to see change in the state where we're not at the very top of poverty year after year? Isn't that a sad thing? And uh, actually, we had a, an event last night um, at our office, which was uh, several of our raving fans came together to bring community together to say, look at this work, support this work, it's really important. We can't leave the future of our children to some distant hero. Um, and at that, one of the people who introduced me was Dr. Nordy Kalishman. And he was with a group of pediatricians 30 years ago when we started the Coalition for Children. And I was the first executive director of that organization. It was absolutely based in an understanding that poverty puts kids at risk more than anything else that we can think of. And that we have to address that. And here we are 30 years later in the same position. We really need to change the mindset. <clears throat> we need to understand that, that poverty really is a social construction. It's not a character flaw. And that if people are given opportunity, they really will thrive. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you for having me.